Our next speaker, just to save time, we're going to pull him on up to the stage. He is the lead scientist for machine learning at the Fraunhofer Institute, Professor Dr. Christian Bauchhager. There you go. Still waiting. Great. Can you hear me? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to CEBIT. Um, my talk is entitled, Do We Need Informed Machine Learning? What could I possibly mean by that? Uh, let me give you a brief recap as to what I have been discussing last time around at CEBIT. Remember that uh, AI has made tremendous progress in the last couple of years. And that was mainly driven by something that is called deep learning. And deep learning has to do with neural networks. And on this slide, this is really just a brief recap. We see what that means. On the left, we have a pictorial representation of what is called a mathematical neuron. Numbers are fed into such a mathematical neuron. Then they are multiplied by weight vectors. All of this is summed together. And then some thresholding is carried out. Think of each mathematical neuron as computing yes or no decisions. That really what a single neuron uh, does. And on the right, we see a neural network. That is what happens if we connect several of these simple neurons together into a larger architecture. We get these neural networks. And what we see here is a caricature of a deep network. Modern neural networks consist of millions of these simple computational units layered into hundreds of layers. So that was about neural networks. And these things, these incredibly simple mathematical architectures, they have led to all the breakthroughs we have seen in the last couple of years. We have seen dramatic progress in cognitive computing and in artificial intelligence. Things like text understanding, image understanding, speech understanding, and robotics benefit tremendously from the technological boost of the last couple of years. And all of this is of uh, practical importance in a vast array of uh, application fields. For instance, in finance and insurance, medical diagnostics. I've been talking about that last year, but also in what is called Industry 4.0, this idea that uh, industrial devices are communicating with each other, that they have to communicate in an intelligent manner. Uh, it plays a crucial role in logistics, drug design, and genetics. And if you want to have a short glimpse into what is possible in all these application areas, then I invite you to go and see the Fraunhofer booth. There you will see lots of demonstrators as to, in particular, finance, insurance, industry 4.0, and logistics. So, and this is where we are in 2018. Tremendous progress in artificial intelligence in the last couple of years. Disruption in many application areas. Huge industrial potential. To recap, we are living in an age of big data. We now do have high performance computing at our availability for low costs. And then there is this idea of deep neural networks. And these three technological trends brought together have led to this progress in artificial intelligence you're all reading and hearing about in the media. But there are a couple of problems when it comes to data-driven learning, as I have sketched up until this point. There is something that is called wapnik chervonenkis theory, and this is really crazy, complicated mathematics. But mathematics tells us, in order for an automatic decision-making system to work well, in order for it to learn from data, to learn from examples, we need a lot of examples. If the system is very flexible, has lots of parameters you can tweak, then we need tremendous amounts of data we can use to train the system. And while 
companies whose business models revolve around digital services do not have any problem whatsoever with large amounts of usable data to train AI systems. Many companies and users out in the wild do have these problems. Everybody has big data. Lots of the data is in certain spreadsheets. Other of the data are in databases. Some of the data out in the wild are in sketchbooks. There is a lot of data. Everybody is drowning in data these days. But most of this data in most of the industries is not in a form that can be used for plug and play machine learning. That is the first problem we have. Even though we live in the day and age of big data, not everybody has the kind of data AI needs to work well. And the second problem is that these neural networks I have so ever so briefly talked about are essentially black boxes. You have seen the kind of computations they perform. And we can write this down with pen and paper. These are the equations those neural networks compute. But what does it really mean? What does it really mean? We know that these architectures can do uh, surprising things. They work really, really well. But if you are interested in where inside of such a neural network a certain decision was finally made, you will be hard pressed. Neural networks are black boxes. And the kind of computations they do are not traceable for the average human being. You know, this is really just complicated mathematics, and it's very difficult to interpret what is going on inside. And that leads to a couple of problems. And let me start with the interesting part of this presentation. Uh, these neural networks can make strange decisions. I don't know if you have seen this example before, but what we see here is an image of a husky. And the neural network had been trained to recognize the content of digital images. And it classified this image as a wolf. Well, that's OK, because this husky does not look that much different from a wolf. But after all, it is a husky and not a wolf. So the network made a mistake. The AI made a mistake. And the question is, uh, why would that have been the case? So the researchers looked into that and tried to reverse engineer how this neural network came up with the decision. And what do you think the reason was? Was it the eyes, the nose, the teeth? What turns this husky into a wolf? Here it is. It turns out that in the training data that had been used to train this AI, this neural network, to recognize the content of images, there were a lot of images of wolves. But all the images of wolves did contain snow. So this neural network learned that when there is snow, there is wolf. This is ridiculous. But it happens nevertheless. This is a PR disaster that happened to Google in 2015. In Google Photos, you can use an AI to get information as to the content of images people upload to Google Photos. For instance, if there are skyscrapers, Google Photos said this is skyscrapers. If there is a car in the image, uh, Google Photos said this is a car. And then there were these two African people, and Google Photos said gorillas. And we are beginning to see a problem with purely data-driven machine learning. This was easy to fix. The problem here was that when the AI had been trained, the people who trained the AI only used white people faces to have it learn about how people look like. The training data was flawed. And the system classified these people as gorillas. 
It's even worse. There is research that shows that even if these neural networks, for instance, again in the context of image analysis, have been trained reasonably, have been trained in a manner where mistakes, as we have seen them on the previous slides, do not happen, where the training data is balanced, it turns out that you can fool these AI systems rather easily. What we see here is the image of a banana, obviously, a banana. And in the upper row, the neural network classifies the content of that image as a banana, correctly so. But then if you place this strange circular image patch shown on the left into the image, the neural network then classifies the image as showing a toaster. This strange image patch had been designed on purpose. The researchers looked into the network and tried to figure out what kind of activities of these little neurons in this network would happen in order for an image to be classified as a toaster. And once you reverse engineer that, you can create these image patches. And you put them into an image. And then all of a sudden, something that shows a banana is called a toaster. Is this a problem in practice? What would happen if you were driving your self-driving car, and somebody would stick this thing onto a stop sign? Think about that. And there is one final example. This is about getting Tay. Uh, who knows about Tay? Tay was a chat bot introduced by Microsoft. It was a Twitter bot. It was an artificial intelligence program that could tweet. And not only could it tweet, it could also learn from interactions with other Twitterers. And within hours after it had been put online and began to tweet, the 4chan trolls came around and began to tweet tweets addressed to Tay. And those of you who know 4chan and 4chan Paul may know what kind of tweets that were. This was basically racist slurs thousands upon thousands upon thousands of those. And Tay learned within hours that racism is OK. And the tweet we are seeing here, heard people saying, I wouldn't mind Trump, he gets the, gets the job done, is a very, very harmless one. There were much juicier ones this chatbot learned to tweet. So. What does all of this tell us about the state of purely data-driven artificial intelligence, the kind of artificial intelligence that has been so successful throughout the last couple of years, that kind of artificial intelligence that is driving the media crazy, the kind of artificial intelligence you will have all read or heard about in the media? It tells us that we have a problem. And the problem is that machine learning needs thick data rather than just big data. Thick data is a lot of data in a form that is well-balanced, unbiased, unprejudiced, and annotated so that a system can learn from that. In reality, however, in most industries, we do not have thick data. Rather, we have thin data. Lots of data, but basically useless for machine learning. And this is the answer to my initial question. Do we need informed learning? Yes, we do. And this is what we are doing at Fraunhofer right now within the Fraunhofer Center for Machine Learning. We are looking into the idea of informed learning, of using human knowledge, human knowledge as to how the world works, so as to help these machines to avoid these silly, 
stupid and potentially very dangerous mistakes. Informed machine learning combines knowledge and data-driven techniques. It can cope with limited amounts of training data and the decisions made by an informed machine learning system are interpretable. And if you want to learn more about all of this, I invite you to check out the web pages of the Fraunhofer cluster for internet technologies, for cognitive internet technologies. Check it out. Learn more about what I just teased in this talk. Thank you very much.